Most of this information comes from publication 946, How to Depreciate Property Tax Year 2022. You can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement, but just an outline other forms and schedules flowing into these line items. One of those, the Schedule C, having business income minus business expenses, giving us the business net income from the Schedule C, in essence, rolling into line one, income of the income tax formula. Page one of the 1040, noting that the Schedule C would roll into the Schedule 1, rolling into the Form 1040, page 1, line number 8. The Schedule C is the profit or loss from business, which has an income statement format, income minus expenses. We're focused on the expenses and more particularly or precisely on the depreciation expense, remembering that we may have to deviate even if using a cash-based system to an accrual concept when we make purchases of the depreciation and then we're subject not to generally accepted accounting rules but to the tax code where we have different objectives for depreciation our objective as the tax preparer and and the taxpayer is usually to try to depreciate as much as we legally can up front because that's usually best for taxes, a different objective than what we might have for the bookkeeping side of things. Okay, that said, what is the basis for depreciation? We can think of the basis as similar to, to kind of like the cost or the adjusted cost of some kind. So the basis for depreciation of maker's property is the property's cost or other basis multiplied by the percentage of basis investment use, meaning Obviously, if we use the thing 100% for business, then that would be basically, in essence, the cost or basis. But if we use it partially for business and something else like personal use, then we might have to allocate which is for business versus personal, which gets a little bit more messy. So for a discussion of business investment use, see the partial business or investment use under property used in uh, your business or income producing activity in chapter one. Reduce that amount by any credits and deductions allowable to the property. The following are examples of some credits and deductions that reduce the basis. Now, as a general rule, remember that when we buy something, if we just bought equipment, let's say it was 100% for business, that would in essence be the cost or basis, the basis or cost being good in essence, in that we want to be able to get the deduction related to that basis or cost, which under normal depreciation would be like an expense from a straight line standpoint, it would just be an equal amount over the life of the asset. What we would like to do is get more benefit from that basis, that cost up front. If we do get more benefit up front, then we get the benefit right of the expense up front, but we also have to decrease the basis or adjusted cost which means that we're gonna have a lesser benefit going out in the future. We're eating up the benefit up front. We wanna eat that cost or that basis faster usually because that's gonna be the best strategy for taxes because we get the tax benefit sooner. So for example, if we had a deduction for section 179 property, you can kind of think of that as though we got a whole lot of depreciation, possibly the whole thing in year one similar to as if we just got to expense it in year one why do i have to go through this whole capitalization business in the first place if you're just going to let me expense the whole thing might be your thought process in this case and when this situation but then you would think okay now i got the depreciation in year one i no longer have any basis left over to take in future years which is okay because I would rather take it in the first year usually anyways. You've got any deduction under the section 179B of the Internal Revenue Code for capital cost to comply with uh, Environmental Protection Agency sulfur regulations, similar concept. Any deduction under 179D, similar situation, of the Internal Revenue Code for certain energy efficient commercial building property any deduction for removal of barriers to the dis to uh, the disabled and the elderly why would this one be here well you might you might get like a a benefit from it so if you get like a a credit from doing it or something like that 
then you would think that you already got kind of a benefit from it. And if you also got the expense, maybe that would be kind of double dipping. So you might have a situation where that where that comes into play.